Welcome to another week of The Guys Next Door, brought to you by Picture Rocks Cooling, Heating, and Plumbing. I'm your host, Ron Arenas, with my co-host, Pastor John McLean. Yeah, you didn't even have time to think of something <laughs> to, to throw me <laughs> off on that one. Huh? You're like, let me just play it straight on this one. <laughs> we, can't, we can't deal with any more mess-ups today. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, we got uh, Justin Spears. Oh, no, we don't have Justin Spears on the phone. Next time. We don't, yeah. Let's get ju- in the next I'll couple weeks, him, we're going to yeah. get Justin Spears yeah, we'll for sure. We'll figure it out. Yeah. For sure, but... Good thing is he's a local guy. He's yeah. on the same time as us, yeah. and we can we can figure it out. Yeah, so. yeah. Those those who are are watching the behind the scenes stuff, you'll get the the laughs and the inside track on that. But um, today we're going to do something a little special. I, I was just realizing we a- have, every day together is special. John. Every day is special. Yeah, yeah absolutely. There you go. We are blessed. Yep. We are so very blessed, and we get to talk on the radio. Particularly, I was I was thinking about how we've never spoke about. I don't think the marchathon or kind of go haven't. into it. On, on this show. So no, I definitely uh, taking a deep breath with three weeks out till I have to go Ooh. live on the street for three days. Um, yeah. Yeah, Tell us about be, that. What is the Marchathon? So the Marchathon to the VA, this will be the second year that we march, or I march rather, from um, Veteran Rescue Mission that is northwest of Arden and Thornydale. It's a mm-hmm. homeless veteran transition program, Tiny House Village, 22 miles to the VA. Um, through the different tunnels, the parks, and the different high concentrated areas of the unhoused population, and um, pretty much letting, you know, outreach to the homeless, let them know what services and what needs are available to them. And the, the ostensibly the main idea is to locate homeless veterans and get them connected with benefits because that, as Excellent. Veteran Rescue Commission, that's what we do. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. that's your purpose. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. At least one of them. I at yeah, one well, time, yeah. at one time, I was. I felt like, oh man, I found it. This is it. Oh, I don't need. I'm. I found my calling. But then here we are doing another one of my callings. Yeah. You know, another one of my purposes. So it's yeah, it's definitely a blessing. But I certainly, my favorite thing, and I, I have my son in the studio today. So I hopefully he d- this doesn't hurt his feelings. But uh, my favorite <laughs> thing in the world is sitting on the couch with a veteran that I helped get housed, helped him get that couch us hugging and crying and reminiscing about how far he's come to get to that point so yeah, that's awesome yeah that's where it's at yeah it is mm-hmm. especially for a veteran that served our country mm. you know they've they've sacrificed their family has sacrificed mm. and then they're kind of forgotten you yeah. know they're they're out on the streets mm-hmm. they need help maybe they don't n- know where to go mm-hmm. and uh yeah yeah. yeah, just to reach out to them and and get them to where they need to be, so that they can get their help. They can get their housing vouchers mm-hmm. and you know their mail, so that they can start getting their benefits coming yeah. in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and just the basic information. I mean, I think the big thing that I I notice, and I still notice as I you know I go work with the the population on the streets is just like when you you know it's like Google. You, you don't know who to trust. You mm. know, you can Google any subject. Like right now, you can Google <laughs> you how could. how to fix your air conditioner right and you would have 20 different answers it's not a thousand different yeah 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 so who do which one do you trust right you know which one do you go to and and that's uh, you know that's the big thing no matter what the the need is that's the big problem that we see is just where people are inundated with information they don't know who to trust and where to go so it's always a blessing to me to particularly bump into a veteran and say hey bud i've been there yeah i've gone through that you can trust me in in that and this is the door I would go knock on. So you don't waste your time knocking on these other 20 doors, getting told no. Right. And probably by the time you get to that 10th door, you're going to give up. Yeah, you're going to give up. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. So do you see a lot of the same people out there? And maybe some guys and, and women, you know, want your help and some of them don't want your help. And do you, do you kind of recognize some of them out there? There's definitely, I want to think probably at this time, maybe 20 people that I've known for probably at least 15 years since I've gotten into really? this that I wow. see every day. Like one of them I saw on the way here to the studio today, his name's Tree. Um, he's a, a six foot five oh, wow. um, black guy. Used to be a really big guy when I knew him 16 mm-hmm. years ago, but he's now kind of like emaciated, kind of sucked in. But if you, you'll you see him on the corner of the freeway and speedway holding a sign on occasion. Mm-hmm. And he has a, a, um, a shopping cart with a whole bunch of stuff Okay. in it and I've known him <clears throat> you know we lived on the street together at one time so oh. there are there are those but the crazy thing about that guy Tree nicest guy in the world you know certainly one of the but most of the beloved characters on the street so 
um, certainly one, but if you saw him, one would yeah. be afraid and looking at him because he certainly looks, you know, looks perceptually scary, intimidating. Yeah. yeah. Um, but most of the people, especially at nowadays with how many people actually are on the streets, they're all new faces. Oh, mm-hmm. okay. Mm-hmm. And yeah. everybody that I connect with, it's probably the only time I'll ever see them. Really? So I try okay. to make the best of that time. Yeah, like yeah. Mm-hmm. So why do you think, in in your opinion, why do you think there's all these new faces out there in the well, homeless Well, Tucson's community? always been a hotbed for the transient population as a whole, like Just nationally. Just because of the climate? The weather. Yeah, mm-hmm. there's no yeah. snow and stuff. And yeah. Tucson among Arizona is what what I've called, or even what we call kind of in the, the um, organizing community, a progressive hotbed. Mm. So... This Tucson, San Francisco, Portland, Seattle, Denver, um, there's other little cities like that in the okay. east that that's where a lot of, um, you know, homeless migrant population go to just because the legislation is not as strict against them. So oh, it makes okay. life not so tedious. Hmm. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. So you see people from all over, all over the country and even... Mm-hmm people that uh, aren't from this country Mm -hmm. out there. Yeah, the migrant population I don't see as much um, just because they have a habit of staying a little bit kind of more concealed. Right. But, um, yeah, definitely of the, but but it's Tucson. Of Tucson, the transient city. Yeah. So of Tucson, not too many of us are from here. That's true. Mm -hmm. That's true, yeah. Mm -hmm. There's not a lot of natives Mm -hmm. from here. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think you meet a lot more people that are not natives. You know, when you find someone that's that's been born and and grew up here in Tucson, it's it's more rare. Yeah, and you guys kind of stick out actually. Oh yeah. Yeah, because you're from you're born and raised yeah, Tucson. I was born and yeah, raised yeah, in Tucson for sure. Yeah, you you and you epitomize that, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> that's, I mean, realistically, that's why I love Tucson because you know okay. the people up Tucson are really. Like, it's a melting pot. This is just real down to earth people, kind of yeah. almost like that that Midwest nice. Mm. I think it's a, a slower pace here in Tucson. Mm-hmm. That's what I've heard, at least. And the people are like, they say hi to you when you walk down the street. Yeah. And um, people like, they they care in a special way than they do in a place like Phoenix, stuff yeah. like that. So Definitely. Yeah. I think Phoenix is a faster pace and mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. they don't care to know know their neighbors, maybe. Sometimes. Yeah, it's a little different. It's a little different feel there. I grew up in you know in Chandler up there, so yeah, I, I'm I've lived in Tucson for quite a while for a reason. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And now you have your family here mm-hmm. and you know everyone's growing up here. Yeah, it's, this it's, is home. Yeah, it, is. Is home. Mm-hmm. it is. It yeah. is. So um you have your marchathon in three weeks. Yeah. What else do you do with Veteran Rescue Mission like throughout the rest of the year? Yeah, well um thankfully we at this point we have a nice connection with most of the agents so they'll refer um veterans to us and and 80 percent of the veterans that are referred to us we can help exactly where they are whether it's oh, okay. they're still in their their apartment they're about to get evicted they're camping out they're at a shelter whatever the case may mm-hmm. be a lot of the work we do is is the navigation work because oh, okay in in the studies that we've done and the studies have shown not only the research study that we did that 80 percent of the gap that we're li- seeing between the unhoused population and the service providers mm-hmm. is just the connection to the information mm, they okay. just they don't know what's there like a, a, a good example would be um three weeks ago i had a female veteran a navy veteran a uh, 67 year old woman call me out of nowhere hmm. and she said okay i've had enough oh. and i was like what? Hello, hey, this is Veteran Rescue <laughs> Mission, Pastor John. How can how can I help you? And she's like, Yeah, I've I've lived in my car for two years here in Tucson, and I've just had enough. Just tell me tell me where I can go get help at. Wow. So I okay. told her, Okay, go to this place at the VA across mm-hmm. the street from the VA. There's this place. They'll help you get um, connected with housing. And in the meantime, this is where a shelter's at, so you don't have to stay in your car. Yeah. And they'll accommodate you, get showers, etc. And then once and and once you do that by this time you'll be squared away and she called me yesterday oh, cool. and told me that she's going to be moving into her apartment within the week that is awesome yeah. yeah and i know you have a lot of stories like that yeah it's i mean this is my life and we've over 600 veterans that we've been blessed to you know get connected with housing over the past um eight nine years since we've been doing veteran rescue missions so all right yeah this is what it's all about and it's it's yeah it's such a blessing tell us a little bit about your tiny house village 
Uh, yeah, Veteran Rescue Mission. We started in 2015, kind of on the heels of a uh, homeless veteran camp that I was part of closing. And um, we worked with over 200 groups to build six tiny houses. We also mm. have two mobile homes on the property that have community showers, community kitchen, community entertainment center, um, bedrooms in them as well. And uh, we've, yeah, it's definitely, it's been a nice, almost, I like to think of it like the carrot on the end of the stick to help veterans get to where they need to be because at this point what was once a year or two years to get somebody housed we can now help get people get housed within three weeks to six weeks so wow yeah that's, that's incredible cool. yeah, I, I love it. the work that you're doing I appreciate thank it. you thank you so much for yeah. being out there well it's I mean, a blessing to have your support man yeah, yeah. Hey, you're out there doing all that leg work trying <laughs> <laughs> try it i'm definitely going to be doing that leg work come november 9th that's yeah for sure literally yeah literally <laughs> yeah i want to put on my step watch so i can see how many steps i get there you <laughs> go yeah you'll get all your steps for the weekend that's it yeah so after this we're going to talk with somebody who's not one of us <laughs> on the guys <laughs> next door brought to you by picture rocks cooling heating and plumbing i am pastor john mcclain the founder and director of veteran rescue mission here with the founder and director of Picture Rocks Cooling, Heating, and Plumbing, the coolest guy in Tucson, Ron Arenas. Go to veteranrescuemission.org to find out more about our march and the work we do to help homeless veterans and more about our different shows. We'll be back right after the break. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to The Guys Next Door. Brought to you by Picture Rocks Cooling, Heating, and Plumbing. Go to picturerocksecooling.com for your cooling, heating, and plumbing needs. It's going to be cold soon believe it or not so you may want to get a maintenance check i heard yeah yeah cold yeah. for tucson yeah, yeah cold for tucson yeah, un- yeah, under 80 is like yeah in alaska like, they'd be like, like what parkas. is this yeah, yeah they'll be shorts and t-shirt <laughs> yeah. i love those people that come here and they wear shorts and t-shirt all, all right, winter long right. that's me but i'm not from alaska but. <laughs> yeah that is you yeah it, uh, it disturbs me a little bit yeah but yeah that that handsome voice that you hear that's the coolest guy in tucson that's ron arenas the uh, the founder and the owner, one of the owners of Picture Rocks Cooling mm-hmm. and Plumbing. I have to say it that way because his, his his wife doesn't like when I just call him the owner. <laughs> 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 and um, I'm Pastor John McLean, the uh, the founder of Veteran Rescue Mission. We were just talking about the Marchathon before the break, but right. now we get to speak with another amazing nonprofit in Tucson. I believe founded. By a group of people, but Johnny. No, nope, it was founded by um, our CEO, Johnny yeah, Vasquez. Okay. Mm-hmm. Ah, okay, but that's um, that that voice you hear, um, not as handsome, but <laughs> definitely beautiful, uh, Kehilani. Mm-hmm. I think I said that right. We we everybody Almost. like everybody <laughs> at the Sands Club, <laughs> which is where we met. We all like we we try to practice, but <laughs> we we have this you know this Arizona tongue. <laughs> so you know it's it's not easy. I've, I've been telling everybody to to go with K. Mm-hmm. I don't know if, if you're okay. <laughs> with oh that yeah, that's but fine. yeah i no, think okay. that all right i think that i can handle that feel, yeah, yeah everybody will feel safe yeah. with that but um she is, what's your your role with spark so i am a volunteer with spark okay. actually oh, um, okay. um, but i am also our ceo's assistant okay and okay. i wear many hats yeah so yeah. i've been with them for about two and a half years now nice and in that time i've done everything from working the operations with our metaphysical shop, working our event coordinators, working with the community outreach and, you know, doing our own events, our outside events, inside events. Mm. So, you know, I'm just kind of, I'm, I wear many hats. Yeah, for <laughs> sure. So just, I mean, I guess fill our listeners in on, you know, what is Spark Project Collective? This, I mean, definitely for us where I thought it was unique, um, other than the kind of the guys next door fit with uh, a male founder is how it's a nonprofit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. A Guinness Book of World Record holder. You know, you a very unique organization, um, particularly for a nonprofit. But don't let me ruin it. <laughs> you know, you, you go ahead and, and fill tell us the in. details. Yeah. yeah. So, um, like I like to explain to people. So, Spark mm-hmm. Project Collective. We are the world's first nonprofit that is a tattoo and piercing parlor. We mm. also have a metaphysical shop. We have a production shop. We have an event center. We have an education center, and we also have a in-house tattoo supply company that we utilize with our apprentices at our shop oh wow. so um the best way i explain it to everyone is when you go through our doors and you have a reading an intuitive reading with one of our readers or a tattoo or piercing that that service right uh-huh. is going to go ahead and support one the entrepreneur that mm. is providing that service right. but then on the opposite side it's also going to help support Tucson mm-hmm. and up to date we're at like 
think it's believe it's 1.3 million I think that we are at right now um, that we have actually donated back into Tucson mm. into the communities mm. we've worked with other organizations like Gap Ministries Gospel oh, Mission nice. We work with the Arizona Food Bank. Mm-hmm. Um, we'll be working with you next yeah, month. For, yeah, absolutely. Um, the Don't Veterans remind March. me of how I have to, yeah. <laughs> 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 how I'll be living oh, on the yes. streets for three days. Remind me, <laughs> but don't remind me. I will give you water. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, but, you know, what makes us so very unique as a nonprofit is that we have for seven years been mm-hmm. completely self-sustainable. Mm-hmm. We've never had a grant. We don't have grown donors. We don't have sponsors. This, um, I, in fact, our, our ball that we are doing in mm-hmm. January, that is the reason for it because uh. now we're outgrowing so many spaces. We need to get into one space. Mm. You know, oh. we're mm-hmm. running about what six uh, six o- different operations out of two different buildings and one of the buildings have four different spaces mm. so it's mm. it's a lot you know mm. it's not just it's cool to see yeah. though yeah <laughs> oh yeah. 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 yeah yeah have you seen it have you seen the place no i haven't yeah you gotta you have to see this place it's, yeah. it's unlike not only i mean having tra- traveled around the united states to most of like we were discussing before the progressive hotbeds of the united states because that's where i was learning to how to ha- best serve the unhoused population mm-hmm. but I've never seen anything like this mm-hmm. at all, this, this space. What it is is really is we're a transformational hub. Mm. And, you know, the more that we grow, the more we expand, the more people that we help and people that we see, especially here in our Tucson community, you know, we want a place where everyone can come to and work to their full potential of themselves, right? Okay. No matter yeah. your life challenge, no matter your past, no matter your history or, you know, the abilities that you have, you're not going to do it alone right? You have a place to belong. You have a place for everyone to come together and be a community and connect and use creativity with the arts to go ahead and do that. And that's what I feel really is so unique about us. And I just, I love it. Like I really do. Well, speak to the origin story of Spark Project Collective and and how Mm -hmm. it came about and like how it grew to what it is now. So when so when Johnny Vasquez, he used to have another nonprofit that was over in um, California. And he worked in California because that's where he's from. Mm. And then when um, he had, you know, his daughter was moving over here. So he wanted to have closer time with his daughter. Um, right? Okay. And so he moved over here and he was just thought, oh, you know what? I'm just going to do tattoos. I've set myself up. You know, he's, you know, he set himself up financially for the rest of his life he's Mm. okay but he wanted Mm. to do something that could give back so he just started doing tattoos and anything that he made with tattoos he'd give it back into the community Mm -hmm. right and then he met his first apprentice and our first apprentice with Bryce has been life-changing you know Mm. and then Johnny found a new mission he found a new mission and that was to help the entrepreneurs help the people of Tucson and give them a place where they can be found Mm -hmm. And really, it went from, okay, here we're doing tattoos, now we're doing piercings, now we have a retail shop. Okay, now we're going to expand out some more. Um, You know, they started doing events, started doing concerts from there. Then they Mm. went to, you know, we, it's just, it's evolved. It's Mm -hmm. evolved continuously. The metaphysical shop came in because that was one thing that metaphysics, there's not a, a place, a structural, you know, brick and mortar Mm -hmm. that you can go to no matter what you are and come and meet people and just have a conversation you know and so that's how the metaphysics kind of it 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 took on a life of its own Mm -hmm. right and the event center took on its life of its own Mm -hmm. and then we Mm -hmm. had our education center because a lot of us teach classes Mm -hmm. and so you know what kind of classes so there. my per, um, personally myself, I teach shadow work class. I have a shadow work workshop that I work with people mm. once a month, um, and then we have meditation every single week. We have okay. uh, DND every week. We have um, like Christy, our she's one of our other psychic mediums. She teaches a intuition development twice a month. Mm. So there's always something that's kind of happening, you know. Mm. But we also have the vision boards. We have the um, community art we have the community stitch social which is where literally grandmothers are teaching the next generation how to do what Mm -hmm. they do you Mm -hmm. know so it really is a place where we all come together and that's why you know we're just really excited to expand and grow and Mm -hmm. so 
I definitely would tell you listeners to get a ticket yeah. <laughs> for well, the ball. Well, tell us more about the ball and, and the upcoming events yeah. you guys have. So the ball that we have is going to be on January 25th, and tickets are 150 for a single, 300 for a couple, but it's live entertainment. We have America's Got Talent, Dwayne Hill, Magician, oh, and wow. we have... Uh, um, we have a hypnotist coming in from Phoenix. We are currently working on contracts with belly dancers, but okay. we also have this amazing silent auction that we're going to do, and it's all celebrity memorabilia. We have, you know, uh, Muhammad Ali's glove. Mm. We have the, wow. um, you know, Taylor Swift. We have a signed guitar by her. We mm. have wow. Bruce Springsteen's albums. You know, we got Stranger Things, Nightmare Before Christmas, just a bunch of different celebrity mm. memorabilia. And the proceeds that we raise from that is going to help us get into that larger building mm. that nice. we knew, you know, that we need so we can all be collectively together. Mm. Mm. So yeah. it's definitely a night. It's going to be at Casino del Sol, so it's going to be fun. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's, That's a nice space. Yeah, mm. that really oh, is. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's definitely. <laughs> and you said you've put on concerts before? You said you mentioned yes. production? Um, so they did do concerts before. Currently, right now, we don't do to the noise utterance, but oh, um, okay. we do still have, you know, an event center that we rent out to the community for birthday oh. parties, you know, wedding receptions, all of those. And then we also have our, um, you know, our markets that we do with the new moon and the full moon. And hmm. so there's always constantly hmm. something kind of happening, mm -hmm. and it's really fun our production shop is our in-house production shop so we make our own stickers we make our own products oh, we okay. have you know kind of like that that side of the house yeah. so it's really awesome and unique and nobody really kind of does what we do <laughs> that's why <laughs> yeah. you know they'll be like oh yeah i've i've I, I do a non-profit too i'm like yep that's awesome you know and and mm. you know it's great you know what i mean but we we just do it in such a collective way that it really isn't just one thing after another. Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? it's, it's just, we always do it. And so it's really, really awesome. I'm very grateful to be a part of such a great organization. That's wow. awesome. Thank you. And yeah. for people who want to be involved or want to donate mm -hmm. or participate or, you know, get you know get involved in any way how can they do that um so they can come down to our shops and either speak to myself at the four of wands at 43 49 east broadway boulevard okay or they can just go ahead and then contact us through the website nice and which is which is sparkprojectcollective.com sparkprojectcollective.com or mm -hmm. tell the address again um address is 43 49 east broadway boulevard awesome all right well, well thank, thank you, you so much. much for coming on no thank you for having me it was a pleasure yeah we'd like to thank our sponsors Tucson Tamale, Steamy Concepts, Crest Insurance, Piper Family Painting, Tucson Pack and Ship, Tucson Pack and Ship, and Picture Rocks Cooling, <laughs> Heating, and Plumbing. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you guys all for listening. This has been The Guys Next Door, brought to you by Picture Rocks Cooling, Heating, and Plumbing. I'm Pastor John McClain here with the coolest guy in Tucson, Ron Arenas. Go to PictureRocksCooling.com for more information, as well as VeteranRescueMission.org, as well as CommonGoodTucson.com. Just a whole bunch of websites. Go to them all. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you next week.